for our sake, could you say how you say your name? Sure. Because yeah. people it's, call you different yeah. by different names. So Beto, B-E-T-O, last name O'Rourke, O apostrophe capital R, O-U-R-K-E. I'm a member of Congress uh, representing the 16th Congressional District of Texas. I'm running to represent everyone in Texas in the United States Senate. Visiting all 254 counties, everyone is heard and listened to and fought for. <laughs> This point in history could not be more critical. All of us have to come together and get after the big, ambitious, aspirational goals that we can do together. You know, you got Ted Cruz versus Beto. I mean, who are you going to pick? The cool one or the creepy guy? I don't know if Jesus can get elected running as a Democrat in Texas. Beto and, and his ilk, they are of the ideology of destruction and death. There's, there's no question. Socialism is evil. Keep the government small and out of our lives, and that's not going to happen with Robert. So I was born Robert Francis O'Rourke, but in El Paso, if you're born Robert or Albert or Humberto, if your name ends in, in Berto, you are called Beto. It's just a nickname. And my parents called me Beto from the very beginning and it just stuck obviously. No one in Texas probably knew who I was a year ago but Amy and I knew that we had to do everything within our power to make sure that we make this a better place and that we meet the challenge. You know, walls or Muslim bans or press as the enemy of the people or just, you know, diminishing any dignity left in national service and public life, um, we had to be part of the solution. I don't know if there are enough Democrats to do this. It's got to be about people. I don't have a pollster, so I don't know how this stuff looks from the perspective of a poll, but it sure does feel right to me. We used to be the indispensable nation. Now we're the nation that is left out of leadership. Texas in 2018 is at the, you know, what some might see as the plateau of, you know, more than two decades of solid Republican rule. The Democrats have been about as low as a political party can be. Democrats have no leverage. You put those things together and it just doesn't give them very many tools for reaching into the electorate and ginning up the kind of turnout, including among Latinos, that they vitally need to begin to claw their way out of the hole they're in, and that hole is a deep one. We're in Texas, and we're, we're conservatives here in Texas, we're Republicans, and that's, that's all she wrote. There's some who embrace a big government liberal vision of higher taxes, more regulation, more Obamacare, more debt, more government, less freedom. There's some who think the most important thing government can do is provide sanctuary cities and open borders and welcome people to violate our laws. But you know what? That ain't Texas. All right, everybody share this. Beto O'Rourke is on a skateboard in a Whataburger parking lot. I don't know if it gets more Beto. There's no two ways around the fact that he starts at a significant disadvantage because his name recognition is, is low. Given that, he's done a pretty good job of finding creative ways to create buzz and, and to become more well-known. But he's still got work to do. Oh, wait, wait. We are here today in the 254th county. Thank you so much. See you down the road. Is it? I get it? You're good. Right in the middle. Uh-uh. Just kidding. No, you're good. How are you taking that persona on her argument that people yeah. are sort of, you know, you're this, you know, rock star celebrity guy? Yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. And, and I think what, what is exciting to people is less me and more what's going on in Texas right now. And the fact that uh, for so many, these are such dark times um, and there's such profound disappointment in some of the things that this country is doing and that there's gonna be such a positive, powerful, strong answer to that. And it's gonna be Texas. We're gonna send you out uh, to go knock on doors. Um, everybody's individual goal is to knock on 50 doors today. Um, I'm sometimes cautious of the sign. It's a very unique area because it's a democratic area, but not a lot of people vote here. My name is Stephanie Corte. I'm originally from El Paso, but my home now is McAllen, Texas. This is what matters. Um, you know, not just Beto, but politics in general, I think young people need to get involved. This is what changes people's lives in this country on a larger scale. Um, there are many things that I could be doing, um, but I think if I could help get good candidates elected, that changes generations and generations. Okay, 614. So the Latino population has been increasing at a much faster rate than any of the other you know, major demographic groups. Latinos are you know, just over 38% of the overall population. They vote at a much lower rate. And Democrats have been trying to do something about that for as long as this has been recognized and have been failing at it for just as long. I think you have to make sure that you have a presence in the urban areas where your voters are but you've got to go to some frontier areas and you've got to find some new votes. We've got to get our senses back in this country. Um, we have to stop spending so foolishly. We have to stop this president from committing $30 billion to build a wall that we don't need at a time of record low apprehensions with Mexico record safety in our communities along the border. I want to make sure that this state, the most diverse state in the country, the defining immigrant story and experience, leads the way in rewriting our immigration laws to look like you. I voted for Ted Cruz last time when he ran, but he's so far to the right that we don't need far right, we don't need far left, we need people to meet in the middle and get something done. That's why I'm here today. I came here to listen and to understand those Texans whom I want to serve in the United States Senate. Explain to me how, if I vote for you, you are going to represent my interests and my desires in Washington. Things that really bother me are like our, our national debt. It's just spiraling out of control. We're in Iraq, we're in Syria, we're in Yemen, we're in Libya. We are in Niger. We are in so many countries around the world spending $700 billion just on the Pentagon. We can do a far better job of conserving the taxpayers' resources, of investing it in things like rural broadband that allow for economic development in small town communities across Texas, and making sure every child has a high quality public education. What I wanted to hear from him is why I should support him as a strong conservative. And the answers I heard today pretty much satisfied me that I think he would represent me in Congress as a Texan, as a conservative Texan, and not necessarily toe the Democratic Party line. And that's what I really wanted to hear out of him, and I think I did. The national image of Texas is, you know, full of cowboys and farms has not been true for a long time. The state is a substantially urbanized place with, you know, major cities, you know, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth area, in the top metro areas in the country, yet the state is characterized by these very large suburban and exurban areas that are dominated by Republican voters who vote in much larger numbers than Democrats. Welcome to the first Texas Senate debate. Turning people against the police, Senator, I please, think is profoundly this, irresponsible. This is why people don't like Washington, D.C. You just said something that I did not say. What did you not say? And attributed it to me. What did you not say? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat 
I'm not going to repeat the slander so, so, so and the mischaracterization. He also grounded his answer in partisanship, talking about the GOP being better than the Democrats. Listen, I could care less about either party at this moment, at this deeply divided, highly polarized time in our history. Congressman O'Rourke agrees with Hillary Clinton. He wants liberal judicial activists on the court who will impose their particular policy view. He's voted in favor of the death tax, keeping it broad, sucking farmers and ranchers and small businesses into it. Bernie Sanders believes in what he's fighting for. He believes in socialism. Now, I think what he's fighting for doesn't work, but I think you are absolutely sincere, like Bernie, that you believe in, in expanding government and higher taxes. And, and, and I, I commend you for fighting for what you believe in. As you noted, we disagree on the outcome, but you're fighting for the principles you believe in, and I, I respect that. True to form. <laughs> I think in Texas, it's going to be leaning more toward Ted Cruz when the election actually rolls around. You know, I think Beto is amazing on stage. He's great with people. But the fact of the matter is that Ted Cruz's policies just have more support from Texas voters. I think that's definitely the case. People in Texas are seeing the benefits of tax cuts and of the economic growth that we've seen here. And I think they really are concerned with policy. And I think personal appeal is certainly important, but people do care about the issues here. You know, one of Cruz's major assets is that he's now done this before a couple of times. And running statewide in Texas, like covering Texas politics, is hard. You have to have a lot of different tones because the different parts of the state are so different and so disparate. There was a classic moment in the debate last night where Beto said, I, I support the Second Amendment. Uh, really? I, I think I literally laughed out loud. I'm like, really? When? Among other things, Beto O'Rourke en enthusiastically supported Hillary Clinton. Well, here, here's the good news. This is Texas. And there are a whole lot more conservatives than there are liberals in the state of Texas. We're strong believers in prayer, and we believe that God has it. I see lots of Beto signs around uh, the city. Beto's made a big splash. Uh, Beto looks good, sounds good, but as far as I'm concerned, Beto's not really in favor of liberty. He's in favor of control. You want him right here? Tell me. Just perfect. Yes. We have a race here, there's no doubt about it. And, and I think the reason is the hard left, the extreme left, they're angry. Uh, they are energized and then many of them hate President Trump. That energy, that anger, uh, is, is, is potent, it's dangerous. It's resulting in tens of millions of dollars flooding into this state. We haven't seen a campaign like this in Texas in a very long time. And to have a campaign without a dime from a single PAC or corporation or special interest, it's exactly what this country needs, the leadership of Texas. I wasn't registered to vote, actually. I just registered like last week, so I did it so I could vote for him. I think he's he's got the rare, the rare uh, combination of of uh, vast knowledge, courage, and compassion. There's just that spark of difference, and it's not like a normal politician that's just out there to get elected and stay forever. He really cares. When you hear him speak, you just want to start standing up, and you want to fight as well. If you go to one of his events, I mean, you can't help but see that there's something going on there. That's been clear from the beginning, but whether that something is really enough to change the underlying fundamentals, I think is still unclear. The math works for Cruz because if you look at, even, even if you start assuming increases in voter turnout and natural population growth, the baseline kind of gap you're looking at is about 900,000 votes. You know, it's a lot of votes to make up in, in, in one election, even if you have a ton of money and a charismatic candidate. I don't always want to do this. I try to do this every morning that I'm here in El Paso.
we're in a race right now and it's a bear and, and this entire race has been you know uphill um but um there are you know there's just a lot of us doing this together uh which which just makes it wonderful so um i i, I like it I, I like the challenge Ready to go home? <laughs> 